Hey guys, welcome to episode 22 of Pineapple Knits. I'm Marina, and you can visit me on Instagram and Ravelry at Pineapple Yarn, and you can visit my hand-dyed yarn company at pineappleyarn.com. So welcome back to the podcast this week. I am testing out some new equipment for the podcast, so hopefully you are enjoying the quality of the podcast. Hopefully it improves a little more. And I'll be completely honest here, guys. This is going to be a shorter episode than normal because this is the third podcast I've recorded today. Uh, the first one, the camera I was using was set in fast motion. So my entire podcast was four minutes long. I have no idea why it was. The second podcast I recorded, there was no sound, even though I double checked the microphone. So this is the third time. Let's hope that the third time's a charm. But I'm really happy to be here with you guys. And um, let's hope that my voice is strong enough to hold up here. <laughs> If you're returning, a returning viewer, thanks so much for joining me again. I always really enjoy chatting with you guys every week. And um, for those of you who are new, this is a knitting and yarn podcast. Um, if I have time, I always love to spin and I'll show some of my spinning. But this week has been very monogamously dedicated to one whip. That is my texture time shawl and I will show it to you guys here in a minute. But first I want to talk about real quickly what I'm wearing, what my dress form's wearing. And this is um, the shawl that I showed last week on the podcast. This is the Hipster Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. It's knit with pineapple yarn in my new colorway, which I have named. And I'll show you guys that at the end of the podcast. And this is the Beekeeper Cardigan by Olive Knits Marie Green. And I loved this pattern. This was a really, really fun knit. Both of these were really fun knits. They're very practical knits. I have worn these garments so much. And this is a pineapple yarn. The colorway is honeycomb. This is a DK weight and this is a worsted weight. So actually both of these projects were fairly fast and um, yeah, really warm, which we have needed here in central Indiana this week. It has drop down to the mid 50s and I think it's here to stay. I don't think we're gonna have any of those mid 80s temperatures that we had earlier last week. And not that I was complaining, I liked those temperatures, but that's okay. But uh, let me show you the finished object that I have this week. This is the third knit that I did, the third test knit from Tin Can Knits. And it is called Almanac. And I knit this for my two year old daughter um, she adores this sweater. It was a wonderful knit. It's a, it has already been worn so many times. And um, I actually knit this with my hand dyed yarn, pineapple yarn. The main color is rose gold and the other colors are pale peach, sapphire, glint of dawn, and neon, let's see, neon coral, I believe. You'd think after saying this so many times with my previous podcasts, I would have got it right. But um, yeah, the rose gold, I loved that. I love this tonal because it's a, it's brown, but it has a lot of pink undertones. It's so beautiful. And I would love to make something else from this, but I thought all these colors, even though they're so different, they really complemented each other well. The pattern itself is great. I, would, I tested it, so I didn't do any modifications but I just love the little bits of color work on the cuffs and the hem, adorable. This was just such a sweet little sweater. And this actually is not just a child's pattern. It comes in a baby size through all the adult sizes. So um, this was so much fun. I really, really enjoyed this. I loved the colors. And um, the one thing I will say, just practically speaking, when I reach in my toddlers to get her arm, I actually pull her hand through so many times and I, I do that with babies, toddlers, it's just what I do. And the color work, because it is stranded color work, it doesn't stretch a whole lot. So, um, you know, just a heads up, if you do knit this pattern or really any pattern that has color work on the sleeves, um, you know, just keep in mind that that doesn't stretch a whole lot and, um, yeah, I don't know if I would put it on the sleeves next time, but it is really, I just, it looks super cute. So 
it's fine. She can get her arm through just fine. And I kept the floats short in the back so she doesn't get her hand, her fingers and her thumbs caught in the floats in the back. So anyway, this is super cute. I enjoyed it very much. This is part of the Strange Brew collection that Tin Can Knits has just released. So if you are in the market for some color work patterns, check it out because, um, yeah, I test knit actually a total of three patterns from the book and they all were so wonderful and I had a really good time with all of them. And hopefully when I get some whips done, I will be able to cast on another color work pattern. I've really been into color work this year. So yeah, so that's been fun, but let me go ahead and show you the one whip that I've been working on, which is the texture time shawl. I will put a timestamp down below if you don't want it to be, or the, the surprise to be ruined. So just go ahead and skip forward to that time if you don't want to see it. But, um, you know, totally honest though, I'm just being honest, like this has taken up all of my knitting time. It's not so much a choice that I wanted to only knit on this, it's that I didn't have a choice because I'm trying to keep up with the clues. But um, I am ha almost halfway through clue two and this is what it looks like so far. It is a little crazy. So this middle section right here is all syncopated brioche, which means that, um, you know, it's not the typical columns of brioche that you see, it's kind of broken broken columns, I think, which adds nicely to the um, the texture of the shawl. They have these beautiful, big, I guess, eyelets or yarn overs. I thought those were really cool. So this is um, clue to these squiggles, what Stephen West calls in his pattern squiggles. And then also, so awesome, all of these Latvian braids. And I have to tell you guys, this was so funny. When I opened up Clue 2 and read the pattern and I saw Latvian braids, I literally laughed out loud because, oh my gosh, of course he would not just put like a simple, you know, couple rows of contrasting color garter stitch or something to break up the rows. Nope, he put something kind of crazy in there. But isn't that fun? I thought these were great and um, they're not hard to do if if you haven't done them they're not hard to do the only challenge that i find with them is that they're a little fiddly just finding your fingering uh how to you know switch the yarns because basically you're twisting the yarns and that's what makes that really cool pattern i don't know if you guys can see that let me do that But I finally feel like I have my footing on it and I know um, these are just repeated rows, all of these are. And so since I've done it so many times now, I have one more um, of this teal color here and then one more, this is the teal wing color, and then one more Latvian braid and I'll be done with this side. So then it, it repeats on the other side. And I think this looks like a manta ray <laughs> or a stingray or something. Um, I have no idea what this shawl is going to look like. I just think it is so interesting, which, you know, a Stephen West pattern never disappoints and it is always really fun. These are the colors I'm using for the Latvian braid. I'm using my main color Heritage and I'm using Siren Song. So those are both pineapple yarn. They're actually in one of my texture time kits that I sold um, earlier this month, I guess. Well, in September, I guess I sold them. But um, yeah, that is it, guys. That is my knitting. And um, I am rushing this podcast a little bit because I don't have a lot of extra time until kids need me. And I'm losing my voice. <laughs> from talking so much so um I am rushing this a little bit I apologize and um just is what it is this week but um I want to show you a couple of the new colorways I dyed up this week the first that I have been promising you guys for so long is this color and it is called profound it is a beautiful blue purple with pink undertones. It glows in this skein. It is really, 
really beautiful. And this is the color that I used in this shawl. And then it's also the color I'm using my throwback sweater. So it is really, you know, right now to me, it looks really purple. It is a blue purple. Um, and it's just, it's super pretty. I saw this color somewhere. Um, this is, I guess, the, the inspiration behind the yarn, right? I saw this color somewhere. It just really struck me. It's not the color I normally go for. As I've said before, I'm not really a purple person. I feel like I'm kind of losing that, but especially after spending so much time trying to get this color. But um, I worked pretty hard trying to get a color that would match this. This is made of many, many layers of dye. Um, I did want to tweak a few things before I put it into the shop, but now I think it's just stunning. I love it so much. So this will be available um, next Friday, I believe the 26th of October. I'll put the date for sure down below. Um, and my updates are always at 8 p.m. Eastern time. But yeah, I think that one's really, it's pretty. I'm so excited to finally be offering this to you guys after making all of these accessories and garments in it. <laughs> but um, the second color I wanted to show you guys is this beautiful saturated kind of, I guess it's a little bit moody pink. It is so pretty. This is another colorway that just glows because of the layers. And this one's going to be called Passionate. And the reason I called it Passionate is um, not necessarily I wasn't thinking of like love, passionate, but I was really thinking of just when you have a passion for something and you feel that fire inside. This is, maybe this is what my fire looks like inside. <laughs> but that's kind of what it said to me, but or, you know, this is, this really speaks to me and that's why I called it passionate. And I thought these two looked really, really pretty together. I think those are gorgeous. I, I will definitely have these on my Lani base, my Lani sock base. I think that I might have it on DK too, a few skeins anyway. And as always, if you guys are interested in more than two skeins, so three or more skeins, you can look in my shop at the sweater quantity listing and I will custom dye any colorway for you. So that's really fun. And that's available now. So if you're interested in a sweater quantity of these, um, head, over, head on over to pineappleyarn.com and look at the sweater quantity listing. I will also put a link down below. And um, otherwise, if you're interested in some um, single skeins, those will be available next Friday. I also dyed up some repeat colorways that will be available next Friday. I will have Honeycomb, which is the same as the cardigan back behind me. So I'll have this on my Lani sock base, and then I also dyed it up in my Noe mohair silk, which is so pretty. I thought this would be so pretty as a Kobu cat. The pattern by Caitlin Hunter, I think that's really pretty. That is definitely in my Ravelry queue. I really want to make that hat. Maybe I'll make that my next cast on. Maybe. So that's Honeycomb. I will also have those two available in Iceberg, which are these colors. This is so pretty in the Noe mohair. I think that's so pretty. And then I have a restock of the teal wing, and I will also have that on the Lani and the Noe mohair silk. So that's what I have dyed up so far. I just have those few skeins. I've actually been working a lot on the advent calendars. So if you have ordered an advent calendar, get excited because the minis are almost completely wound. I have been winding hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mini skeins. It has been crazy, but um, it's actually been really fun because I think because I love yarn so much. And so, you know, if I'm sitting winding minis for hours, I'm looking at just all the nuances of the yarn and I'm not going to give anything away, but um, it's been really fun putting those together. So I'm excited to ship those out. I think those will ship out um, in the next couple of weeks. So that's going to be exciting, but I've been really busy with that. 
I'm going to dye up a lot of yarn the rest of this week and then the beginning of next week. So next Friday's shop update is going to be pretty packed with some yarn. So if you like yarn, you might want to check it out. <laughs> So that's all I have to tell you guys today though. I'm sorry this is so short. I'm sorry to cut it short. I can already feel my voice getting hoarse and starting to go a little bit. Hopefully I will iron out all of these tech issues. You know, props to all of you who have podcasts out there because, you know, I've just been playing around with some equipment and trying to improve um, the quality of my videos and it's, if you're not an expert, which I am not by any means an expert in video podcasting, I guess, video casting, um, I'm not an expert at all. And so there's a lot, it's a steep learning curve. There's a lot that I have to learn. And yeah, I'm just trying to do my best every week, trying to bring you guys some really interesting content and great content. And um, I've really enjoyed connecting with you guys through this. So I'm just going to keep improving and try not iron out the glitches. But thank you so much for being patient with me. And thanks again for joining me, th me this week. Um, if you have enjoyed the podcast, I would so appreciate you. Um, clicking the like button down below and subscribing to the podcast because the more likes and subscribes I have for this podcast, it actually pushes it out to more viewers and I can connect with more viewers that way, which um, I just, I like having all of my yarn friends, you know? <laughs> so um, thanks again, you guys, and I will see you again next week. And until then, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye guys.